They say money can't buy happiness, and this is exactly what they mean by that, because some of David's friends all sat down together recently and talked about how David has so much money and seemingly nobody to enjoy it with, because the rest of them have to work to keep up their own lifestyles, and he just doesn't understand. It's actually really crazy to hear them all talk about how different their lives are compared to the height of David's career. But in Jason's recent podcast episode, this was one of the things they were all chatting about. He was joined by Ilya, Bella, Alex, and John. And at one point, Ilya was talking about the fact that David is in such a different phase of life, where he's actually just enjoying all the wealth that he built from being a YouTuber. The fact that he isn't stressing to film everything or have a vlog ready is giving him the ability to just have fun and party for once. Meanwhile, the rest of them are having to really put the work in now that David is done, and he doesn't seem to get the struggle that they're experiencing financially. It is yeah, David, like the thing is like David's in this like moment in his life, yeah, where he can do anything. Where he yeah. just parties like every day. <laughs> like genuinely, if there's a party every day, Jay, he would be at it. Not kidding. Yeah. And he'd be fucking drinking, having a good time, yeah, whatever. Yeah. I just can't do that, man. You know? No, I like, can't either. I just can't do that. And like, I'm not, <clears throat> he has something to celebrate because he's made it. Yeah. You know? Like, yeah. We've yeah. talked about this before. Yeah. yeah I can't yeah. put myself in that mindset. Like, yeah. He calls me to play pool and I'm like, I gotta go live. <laughs> and, <laughs> and I don't, and I don't expect him to understand that. Like, I, yeah. I know I've told him. There's also things that I like say to him and I'm not sure if he hears me. <laughs> like, I'll say things like, I'm losing my house. <laughs> and, and he'll be like, Oh, but just come play pool. Now, for those of you who might be like, how does David still have all this money? How can he keep up with this lifestyle when he's not really posting content, especially not on YouTube? He does post on Snapchat, which is said to pay just as well as YouTube if you're getting these huge number of clicks. But David also at one point had an app called Dispo. In February 2021, Business Insider reported that it was in talks for a hundred million dollar valuation. David had huge investors believing in this app, and during his cancellation, he parted ways with the app, leaving those to speculate, him probably having been bought out to save the face of the app. And my guess is that he got millions for having to leave the company because he was canceled and they didn't want his name to ruin the potential this app had. And I believe he's probably living off of what he got paid. And it's why he is just able to have fun and party and not really worry about the things that his friends are. On the podcast, John brings up how before when David was vlogging, he never did any of the things that he does now. It was all about work for him. And now, he's the one watching them work i mean it's crazy because like, all at four yeah i mean he but if you think it. about it though from 18 to like what 23 24 oh he was hitting it he, he never he never drank i don't think he oh. ever drank yeah never did never anything did. No, 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 and no, i didn't. just remembered he would like even when we would um visit him we'd be up to like midnight just like watching the edits just like hey is this is this part better or this one's better yeah 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 and then he would have everyone just crowd around his bed i just remember that i was like I thought so that was fun. insane. Yeah. And and that and now it's like the complete opposite. Everyone's like working and here's him just like, hey, what are you doing tonight? And it's like a Tuesday night. Everyone's working. <laughs> you want to watch a movie? Yeah. <laughs> it's just a crazy switch, honestly. Mm. But I just, I mean, I just can't. I just, I mean, the guy, the guy worked hard. Jason does admit that it stings that David didn't want to continue doing their views podcast. He says it stings the most because people still ask about it and want to see them do it. But David just doesn't want to. And that probably has a lot to do with the fact that he's financially free and doesn't need to do the podcast. But the numbers that they're throwing around that David might have turned down split with Jason literally would change Jason's whole life around right now. Like he certainly wouldn't be on TikTok live every day. That's for sure. Yeah. I miss the I miss the podcast. I wish he, I miss the money of the podcast. <laughs> I see Jason say this on a TikTok clip like every other week. What do I do? He turned down ten million dollar deal. I see you say that on like TikTok clips oh, all the time. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. With you, well, that's Zach. like that's like that's like a joke from my act that I say, which is, you know, he turned down all this money and all he had to do was talk to me once a week for forty minutes. You know, like, <laughs> um, <laughs> and, and you, I'll tell you why it stings is because that's that's literally every comment on TikTok Live. When's the podcast coming back? So that's why it stings because it's like if no one yeah. cared, I'd yeah. be like, oh, whatever. No, that was the best podcast ever. It was fun. They all talked about David's reasonings behind not doing it, yet how simple it would be for him to get such a large amount of money. 
no matter how many people love it around him, if he doesn't love it, he just won't do it. Yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and the, which is totally fair. Yeah, yeah, I think so too. Which is like, if you're not into it, that's why I don't I don't bring it up or whatever. It is a crazy concept because you give that concept to anybody else and they're like, what? <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't do that for $10 oh, million? Dude, dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh my God. All you have to do is literally go from your bedroom to your downstairs <laughs> pantry and talk for 40 minutes for $10 million and everyone loves you. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. that's not the case. Not everyone loves you. There's, yeah, there's but, a lot of there's a lot of but people I'm saying, that are like, pissed too. True, but I'm just saying generally the people that listen. Yeah, generally the people that listen. Yeah, yeah, love yeah. You, you know. And things really are just so different than before, and I think Jason feels that the most because he did do the podcast with David, and if ten million dollars was on the table and it was just taken away because David didn't feel like continuing that, that for sure stings. And having to figure out what to do while David just parties because he's gonna be fine, that definitely would cause some resentment. But it also had me thinking about the fact that in the past, David has given out so much to his friends. Obviously, it was all for videos and with the help of sponsors like SeatGeek, but I can't help but think about the fact that Jason probably wishes that things were how they were before, especially because a wedding has been on his mind and they can be so expensive. And the reason I was thinking about this was because in the same podcast, Jason talked about how he was getting married, which as of this week, he did officially get married. But in this episode, he said that they were just going to go to the courthouse and he could only invite 10 people and two out of the 10 people included him and Naveen. He said that the reason they were doing this was because he wanted to keep the wedding cheaper since they spent a lot of money on their combined bachelor bachelorette party but didn't want to hurt feelings by cutting down the invite so much. Yeah so I hope I don't hurt any feelings with this wedding thing but I invited I invited David and Todd and Joe that was it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's like that's it. Yeah. But then I saw Zane at the airport and I was like, oh, I'm like, I felt really bad. I was just looking at Zane. He's like, is everything okay? You saw him at the airport? Well, yeah, we just ran into him at the airport. He was coming out from Fort Lauderdale. We were coming from, we saw him at baggage oh, just oh, randomly. Oh, then I, And then I see you guys and I'm like, I would love for you to have you guys there too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But it's also at an odd time. It's at like, it's like Thursday at like 11. And this all just made me remember how Erin, when she got engaged, David covered the cost of her honeymoon up to $10,000 and gave her $40,000 for her wedding. And with Jason, he was eloping, saying that it would only be $23 for him to get married. But I bet he wonders what it would have been like if David was still vlogging, how big the event could have been. And I mean, I'm sure it would have been a huge ordeal and David would have surprised him with something. But I mean, I think it goes to show that he was really generous when the camera were rolling and now that they're not them in financial struggles is something that he just can't comprehend when there might not be views involved because there was another time where david gave money to mariah because Heath told him that her parents needed some help with their house and here's jason screaming it from the rooftops nearly every single day that he needs help with his house and David just wants to play pool with him. Now, I'm not saying that David has to pay these people or needs to pay these people, no. But I think to all of them, the switch up is probably shocking. Them realizing what was for the cameras and who he really is, which is something that Jeff talked about when he was talking to Church of Paytas not too long ago, that Jason got played by David and he can't feel bad for him for sticking by someone like this. Jason, he gave me a lot of opportunity. He would put me on stage, like go open for me and all that stuff. Like I'll forever be grateful for that. But you still don't even believe in yourself enough to try and do on your own. You think you need this guy and you'll stick with him even though you know that life. he did a lot of wrong sh you know? Yeah. And he wronged you. He literally quit your show. If I don't give a you know, you're not making money. You got played, bro. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And you're literally no. just sitting there like taking all that. So, you know, there's I don't I don't like to talk about the other guys because they didn't really do anything wrong to me. They just stuck by him and he made it that it need, you needed to pick a side. So they go where the money goes. I feel like that's a lot of people too. But now it's all dried up. He ain't paying nobody. He's doing fucking Snapchats. Is that really is that that worth it for your career to try yeah. to be in the background of somebody's Snapchat? And he's not like, generous. Not he's paying people to like be in his no. Snapchat. No, that's like what I'm that. saying. Like, I believe in Jason's mind for so long, he stuck by David because he was like, David's done so much good for me. And that good really was the fact that he gave Jason a platform and he did nice things for Jason because Jason was in turn doing nice things for him as were all the other Vlog Squad members. They were giving David content. Without them, he wouldn't have been successful. The videos just wouldn't have blown
blown up the way that they did. And I feel like Jason felt he owed loyalty to David. But obviously now that everything is unfolded, we're seeing that Jason is really struggling. And that loyalty on the other end doesn't seem to be there when Jason is out here crying for some help. And I think that's why he's gotten to the point where he's talking about David the way that he is in this podcast. I do think that some other members of the vlog squad have gone out and tried to do their own thing and have succeeded. Obviously, Jeff has gone off and succeeded in creating his own identity online. Heath and Zane, I believe they have a pretty successful podcast that they do with Mariah and Matt. They also have a coffee company. Matt is also in every single podcast imaginable. Aaron and Carly are on several podcasts as well. I think some of them did try to create an identity or an audience that liked them for them and not just because they knew David and really succeeded at that, but some were just so connected to him like Jason that it's hard to get out on your own. And it's especially hard when $10 million could have been partially yours. Jason has tried to do his own podcast and he's had some huge guests on that. I just cannot believe that he even got like Danny DeVito, but I do think that he tried to create a separate identity later than some of the others. And that's why it's been harder for him, honestly. And I think this whole podcast really goes to show that, you know, they're saying that they couldn't rely on him and he's just going to do his own thing no matter what and how it affects other people. But that's what some of the vlog squad had to say about how David has been recently living his life carefree clearly sounds like he's not worried about the Jeff lawsuit if he's just kicking back and hanging out and partying but I want to know what you guys think about what was said in this in the comments I love you guys so much and I will talk to you in the next video bye guys uh -huh.